All right, so I'll go ahead and get started. I know that we've only allotted about 30 minutes today, um, so I definitely want to be mindful of everyone's time. I know that we are all busy and trying to get acclimated to um, this remote environment. So thank you all so much for being here today. Um, if I look different, if you don't recognize me, it's because I'm relatively new to this position and also to Triton. Um, so hello, everyone. My name is Christina Hunt. I am the student success strategist uh, within the Division of Academic Success. Uh, in my role, I do manage the retention alert system, which is what we will be going over today. Um, I also manage uh, the peer mentoring program here at Triton, and I work with TRIO students as well. So that those are kind of my niches as to um, what I do here at Triton. Um, the purpose of this session, however, is to learn about retention alert. I know that for many of you, this will probably be a refresher. Um, for some, it may be new information. Um, so we will go over retention alert, and this is for those students who have registered for your class but are not showing up. Um, and you wanna know what's the next steps? What are some tools and some resources that we have here at Triton? Um, for these students um, that are exhibiting at-risk behaviors. So in this presentation, we will go over the retention alert system. Uh, we will also do an overview of the retention alert process. So what, what does it look like when you create a retention alert um, and what are the next steps? Um, also, we will go over how to create and update a retention alert case. Um, this, ideally, this presentation would be in a classroom where we can kind of all pull up um, our portals and, and do a step-by-step -step on how to create a retention alert case. Um, however, I do have quite a few uh, screenshots so you can kind of get a visual as to where everything is located on your portal. Um, we will try to save some space for q and I know this is only 30 minutes. Generally, this presentation is about an hour. Um, however, if you have any questions, you can definitely write them in the chat. And if I don't have time to answer them in this session, I'll definitely email you with a response. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So first, what is Retention Alert? So Retention Alert is a web-based intervention program that encourages collaboration between course instructors and student support staff. It's meant to promote effective identification and academic referral of students in need of academic skill building or other forms of support. Essentially, it's an early um, alert, early feedback and intervention system that is meant to address at-risk students. If applied effectively, research has shown that it can improve student success and also improve student attrition and retention rates. So kind of big picture, um, I know some of you may be familiar with the guided pathways model. Um, most community colleges are moving towards um, a guided pathways model. I know that Triton has a committee that's working um, on this model. Essentially, it's reevaluating on an institution level um, the student experience. So from when they first come into the doors as a fresh new student all the way up until completion and just looking at the systems, um, the services that are in place, and making sure that those systems and services are as, as streamlined as possible and clear and easy for the students to navigate. Um, the model is divided into four principles. The first is to clarify paths to students' end goal. So that's making sure that the university or the institution has uh, degree maps or that clearly outline exactly what a student needs to do in order to complete their program or their certificate. The second principle is to help students choose and enter a path. So that's where our advisors and our coaches come into place 
um, that can help guide students into the appropriate path. This is generally based off of their interests or their career goals, um, but you wanna make sure that you have the tools in place to guide them. And then the third principle is to help students stay on path. So this is where our retention alert system or an early alert system really comes into play because essentially it's designed for the instructor and also for the um, student support staff to kind of communicate to send out these warning or these detections when a student is veering off of the path. Um, usually, you know, they're not showing up to class, they're missing assignments. So you want them to have some type of tool in place to make sure that you can catch them and you can steer them back on track. And then the fourth principle is to ensure students are learning. Um, so this is where our tutoring and our different analytics come into play, just to make sure that students are obtaining the content um, that they're being taught. So that's kind of big picture um, on why the retention alert system is critical and where it fits in, in our, our goals. So for the retention alert, there are many areas um, that do receive the alerts once they are created. Um, just a few of them, the academic advisors, the academic success center, so that's our tutoring center. Um, depending on the type of alert, it can go directly to our deans and our VPs, um, the Center for Access and Accommodation Services, counselors, financial aid, student success strategists, that's myself. So there's many different areas that are all tuned into retention alert that could potentially receive your um, case depending on what type of, of case it is. Okay, so the process. So at this point, you have, you're in class, you have a student that is demonstrating at-risk behaviors. Again, that could be the student is not coming to class, um, they're missing assignments, they've maybe disclosed some information to you um, that you feel that it would be best uh, for a student support staff member to reach out to the student. Uh, so the first step is you want to create the retention alert case, and you would do that through WebAdvisor. And we'll go over later on um, exactly how to create the case. But that is your very first step. You want to create the case. Once the case has been created, that case will be sent to the appropriate student support department. So for example, if you have a student um, that is missing class, uh, that case generally would be sent to multiple departments. They would be sent to an advisor, an academic advisor, also um, usually financial aid, because if, they, if they're missing class and they're receiving financial aid, um, that could be affected. So it will be sent to multiple departments. Um, the staff within that department should address the alert within 48 business hours. The reason why it is essential that as soon as the case is created that we do um, reach out to the student is because the sooner we reach out to the student, the more likely we are to effectively intervene and try to get the student back on track. For the faculty, um, you can check the status and update the case notes in WebAdvisor. So if you are wondering about what's going on with this student, I created this case you are able to go back in through your web advisor to check on the status of your case. And also, if you have new information that you would like to share, you can also go in and update the case as well. For the staff, uh, staff should make at least two different attempts to contact the student. This means that they may shoot the student an email, give them a call. Um, if they are able to see the student in person, uh, talk to them in person but two different attempts to try to make contact with the student to intervene. And then also the staff should update the case um, with any attempts that have been made to contact the student. And then the last and final step is faculty, you should update and close the case when appropriate. So for example, if you opened a case because a student did not have their course material, however, you've talked to the student, they just bought it, it's coming in on Thursday, um, you are able to go in and close the case. Um, 
So my goal in this position is to try to close the loop. Uh, one of the things that I noticed that there were a lot of cases that were opened, however, not a lot of cases that have been closed. So a lot of that comes with not really knowing exactly what's going on with the student, who has reached out to the student. So updating the case and closing the case is definitely critical so that we can all be on the same page and make sure that the student has been efficiently helped. And the same with the staff, um, they have been instructed to update and close the case when appropriate. All right, so let's go over creating a case. So the very first step is you do want to log into your My Triton portal. Um, so it will just be your regular login. Um, there is a section on the right-hand side of the portal that is Web Advisor. Um, here is where you can access retention alert. So you would click on the faculty information. You would then get these drop-downs, and you would click on Class Roster. From there, it will take you to, it should be a list of classes. If you're only teaching one section, such as this example, you'll only see one section listed. However, if you're teaching multiple sections, you'll want to make sure that you click on the appropriate uh, section. So for this example, it is English uh, 114. So you'll click there. And it should take you to your class roster. So it should have a list of all of your students. Um, here's where you can see their names, their IDs, email addresses um, listed. If you click on the name of the student, it'll take you to this next screen. And at the bottom of this screen, there is a hyperlink that says add retention alert info. So that is where you would initiate a retention alert case for this specific student. From there, you will be directed to this screen. So this essentially is a retention alert case. This is what it looks like. Uh, and we'll now kind of go into each line and kind of go over exactly what information you should detail to create the case. But this is what it looks like. So the very first line is type of issue. So type of issue is a drop down. It gives you a list of the type of issues um, that you can indicate. Again, depending on what you select determines which department it goes to. So for example, if you have noticed that a student may be uh, needing some emotional or personal support, this case would go to our counselors. Um, our counselors are now working primarily only with emotional support for our students. However, if you indicate that the student uh, missed an exam, then that will go to our academic advisors. Um, our academic advisors are handling um, academic cases, and our counselors are handling the emotional support cases. As we know that with things um, being as they are currently, we expect to see an influx of more emotional support cases. So the next box is the summary statement, which is here. So it is very important um, in the summary statement to include your class. So the subject and the course number and section number, if possible. Uh, the reason why this is important is because um, when it comes over to the student support staff, they don't know the class that you're referring to. Um, they can, on the back end, go into the student's um, schedule and try to correlate your name to their schedule to see which class um, you are the instructor for. However, to eliminate that extra step, um, if you can please include your class, subject, uh, the course number, and the section, 
um, in the first line of the summary. And then after that, you can indicate for this example, attendance concern. Um, you can also indicate missing assignment, um, some type of just summary of the reason for the case. The next box um, is the detailed notes. So this is where you can be a little bit more detailed as to the reason uh, for the concern or for the case. Um, this is also where you can include, so this example is an attendance issue. So you can include any classroom policies. So for example, um, with this, they're, they're only allowed to miss a certain amount of uh, classes or it will affect their grades. So you can indicate that in the detailed notes um, with assignments, if there, there's a number of assignments, if there's no makeup work, you can indicate that in the detailed notes. So that way, when the student support staff is contacting or speaking with the student, um, they're aware of that policy so that they can go over that information with the student as well. All right, so it's just those three fields, and then from there you can hit submit. Once you hit submit, you should receive a confirmation form. It gives you a number, and it also tells you uh, who the case was assigned to. Just so you're aware on the back end, if for any reason uh, the case in this example was assigned to the Academic Success Center, um, which is tutoring, and if the, the tutoring cannot usually handle that case, the, they are able to reassign it. So you don't have to feel like, oh no, it went to the uh, inappropriate department. They're able to reassign it on the back end. But you should get that confirmation number. All right, so once you have submitted the case and you want to go back and, and view the case just to see what's, what's going on with it, what's up with the student, you can go back into that main screen. Um, you would click on faculty information. And if you click on my contributions to cases, it should pull up all of the cases that you have submitted. Um, from there, you can look at um, the status of the case. So has it been worked? Is it active? Um, is it still showing new, which means no one has opened it yet? Or has it been closed? Um, you can see that information there. And this is kind of what it looks like. These are multiple cases, um, and it has the status of the case. So in here, these are all listed as new, which means that they have not uh, been worked or opened as of yet. If they have been worked by a student support staff, it'll show um, active. Okay, so if you wanted to go in and, and look at some more information on that first screen, there was um, under summary, you would click the hyperlink. So that's here, and it would take you to this next screen where you can see your detailed notes um, in the case. So if you can't remember, you know, what exactly did I write, you can go in and, and look at that. You can also add or request information, so that's on the right-hand side, this blue hyperlink. So if you've um, had a conversation with the student and you feel that there's some pertinent information that you would like to add to the case, you can go in to do that. If you do that, it'll take you to this screen, which looks very similar to um, the initial screen when you create it, um, but you do have the option to put a summary and some more detailed uh, notes and then the case would be updated with your, with your included uh, notes. From there, you would hit submit. All right, so just to kind of go over some do's and don'ts for, for retention alert. Um, some do's are you want to make initial contact with the student outside of the retention alert system prior to sending an alert. So, if a student is struggling with attendance, um, it would be good to just try to either email the student or have a conversation with the student before you send a, a case, because it may be something that can be corrected in that initial conversation. Um, you also wanna be as detailed as possible. 
Um, so again, we're all trying to help the students. So as much information as the student support staff get as possible, the more they know exactly what's going on in the classroom and they can kind of help uh, get the student back on track. And you do also uh, want to follow up with the case that was submitted, and you can do that by going to the My Contribution to Cases. So again, if you are able to update the case with new information, definitely do so when possible. Also, you want to close the case or let the student success strategist, which is myself, you can let me know. Sometimes I will reach out to you um, if a case maybe hasn't been updated and I'm unsure if the issue has been resolved. I'll reach out just to kind of check on the status of the student um, and you can indicate during that time if the case is able to be closed or if there is additional follow-up that's needed with the student. And another do is you want to just keep in mind, be mindful of the primary goal of the system. Um, so it is meant to, um, it's a retention tool, it is meant to intervene, um, give effective intervention so that we can get the student back on track. So just be mindful um, and try to send the alert when the student does still have an opportunity to be successful in the course. Um, so generally this is, you know, the earlier you can send a, an alert, the better. Um, it's recommended that you send it um, around week four. Um, at that point, or week seven, the student has um, turned in some assignments or they've taken an exam by that time, so you have an indication um, of their progress in the class. So you, the earlier you can send it out, the more likely we are to intervene and try to get the student back on track. Um, and some don'ts. Um, you want to, um, you don't want to use the system for issues such as plagiarism, uh, cheating, classroom management, behavioral, um, there you can review the faculty handbook for more information about how to address these concerns. And then lastly, if you want to just email a student, um, you can do it through the class roster. Um, you want to make sure that you don't create a case um, to email students because when you create a case, you do have an option to email the student. So just make sure that you don't get those two functions uh, mixed up. All right, so that concludes the, okay, how do I go back? Okay, so we have about four minutes. Um, are there any questions regarding retention alert? That's it. All right. Well, if you do have any questions, um, I can include my email in the chat. Feel free to reach out to me um, with any questions about the SIM. Um, I'll include that here. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Happy second day of the semester. <laughs> Good luck, everybody. <laughs> Bye. Bye.